Welcome to the first video of a new series, Taming Teyvat. I'll be releasing guides, tips and tricks and more for Genshin Impact, so be sure to subscribe to make sure you don't miss new videos as they're released. This guide is going to go over Adventurer rank, why you might want to increase it faster, and how. This guide is being made with information from the Chinese Open Beta. If any information becomes inaccurate or outdated, I'll be sure to mention it in a pinned comment down below. So, starting with why. Parts of the game are gated behind Adventurer rank. For example, playing co-op has a story progression requirement as well as a requirement of Adventurer rank 16. Cooking recipes, expedition destinations, domains, world level and quests are some of the things gated by Adventurer rank. The level of rewards attainable from domains and ley lines are also dependent on your Adventurer rank and world level. So, increasing your adventure rank faster will allow you to get important materials for powering up your characters and weapons sooner. Next is how to increase your adventure rank. A major source of adventure EXP will be completing the main story quests. Following the main story will periodically award chunks of adventure EXP, so be sure to complete the story quests as they become available. However, you will eventually run into bottlenecks. Main story quests have their own adventure rank requirements that can't be sustained by completing the main story alone. So what do you do when you get stuck? Well, your next big chunk of adventure EXP can come from one-time domains. In Mondstadt, these are the Temples of the Wolf, Falcon and Lion, as well as the Eagle's Gate. These offer a big boost of adventure EXP the first time you clear them, so be sure to complete them as they are unlocked. As you increase in adventure rank, additional side quests will also become available. These can be tied to certain character stories or encountered out in the wild, so keep your eyes open. A moderate amount of adventure EXP will also come from exploration. As you adventure around regions, you'll receive experience for interacting with shrines and waypoints for the first time. You'll also come across four pointed star markers on the minimap. In Mondstadt, these show you the location of Anemoculi. These can be collected and turned in at shrines located around the map, granting adventure EXP when reaching certain milestones, as well as increasing your maximum stamina and granting other rewards. However, once you've exhausted the one-time sources of adventure EXP available to you, it's time to explore recurring sources of adventure EXP. Your next major source of experience are commissions. Unlocked from Adventure Rank 12, you'll receive four daily quests that reward a decent amount of Adventure EXP, as well as a completion bonus for completing all four commissions. Opening chests as you explore will also grant small amounts of Adventure EXP and other rewards. While I wouldn't recommend explicitly prioritising chest hunting, getting EXP from chests is a small bonus that can add up over time. Lastly, and the most variable of recurring EXP, is the EXP gained by spending resin. Resin is spent to get rewards from ley lines and domains, and spending 20 resin in this way equates to 100 EXP. Original resin regenerates at a rate of 1 per 8 minutes, equating to 180 resin per 24 hours, or 900 experience points daily. However, you can also replenish 60 resin using Primo Gems up to 6 times per day. The cost increases with each daily refill, so naturally, players willing to spend more will advance in adventure rank faster. At zero refills, simply doing your commissions and spending your natural resin will net you roughly 2,400 daily adventure EXP, or about 16,800 EXP a week. Three refills a day will cost you 250 Primo Gems, for a total of 1,750 a week, netting you roughly 3,300 EXP daily, or 23,100 a week. Going for the full 6 refills will cost 800 Primo Gems daily, or 5,600 a week, for roughly 4,200 daily EXP, or 29,400 EXP a week. Do consider the trade-offs though. The rate at which you advance through adventure ranks will likely dictate who you play with, at least when it comes to public matchmaking, due to the game's policy to recommend players at a similar adventure rank. Since world levels are unlocked every 5 ranks, starting at Adventure Rank 20, players far ahead in Adventure Rank and world level will also be discouraged from visiting lower ranked worlds, since the rewards available for their resin will be reduced. Naturally, since refreshes cost Primo Gems, you'll also save Primo Gems for summoning at a slower rate if you're spending them on refreshes. In the end though, as I've always said, I'm not your boss, do what you want. 
If you want to whale, buy every character outright, with race to maximum adventure rank, be my guest. However, if you're allergic to spending currency used for pulls, that's also a choice I support. Personally, I can see myself using maybe three daily refreshes to progress at a moderate rate. So, a quick daily checklist. Complete your four commissions, use up your resin, refreshing optional, and then continue with story and side quests. If necessary, explore the map for shrine offerings and uncovering more waypoints and shrines. As always, thank you very much for watching until the end. I'm a latecomer to the Genshin Impact space, so please let me know if I've made any huge errors. Otherwise, take it easy, stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next video.